मैं एंड हैव आ गई शाली की दैट इज ब्यूटीफुल वी आर हेल्ड अ स्पिरिट द ऑपरेशन ऑफ वन वाला एंड साफा दिन The long queues for the first democratic elections in 1994 brought about some hope for a much needed economic change for millions. Out of a period of unprecedented political violence emerged a new dispensation. Top of its priority list was the stabilization of the then crippled economy and in the process it was to create much needed jobs, homes for the destitute and grants for those who had no means. Peter Bila was 18 years old at the time, the legal age to vote. He did so with the hope that both his and his family's economic fortunes would change. Without a job, 27 years after he cast his first vote, he has no choice but to make a living here. Freedom Day is just a regular day to some of those who also voted for the first time as 18-year-olds in 1994. As 45-year-olds today, they have not seen much change in their livelihoods. There's nothing that we see in terms of the democracy that putting us up. We are getting more and more and more down. Unemployment is there. But 27 years now, there's no change. We, we don't see any difference yet. In contrast, Freedom Day for others bears a different meaning. Dr. Ndukam Tambo says government policies, particularly in relation to education, have helped him dearly. I've managed to, to raise a young family, to provide a house for them, to provide education for them, and I've been afforded extraordinary opportunities, you know, uh, from my from the position that I have right now at the university to the kind of work that I do as a researcher, which has been predominantly funded by the National Institute uh, of Humanities and Social Sciences, who funded my PhD program, who funded some of my travels uh, all over the world and in all over the continent. So th there's been amazing opportunities. Ntambo says the democratic South Africa allows him to raise his family beyond racial lines. He says his children see no color and neither does he, but does not take anything away from the fact that the country still has a long way to go to deal with the sensitive issue of race. I just don't want to sound like some rainbow nation kind of... <laughs> <laughs> thing, but again, uh, questions, I mean, as a, as a researcher, as somebody who, who, who travels the world, as somebody who, who under, we, we, re, we still have profound uh, problems with race, you know, in this country. Contrary to the lived experiences of poverty and lack of opportunities for some, Ntambo says the government, in his view, has made opportunities available through policies that assist academics like him in the quest for a better life. It was on the 27th of April 1994 when millions across the country participated in the first democratic elections when former President Nelson Mandela subsequently stepped into the seat of government here at the union buildings. It raised hopes for better economic opportunities for many. While there are those who reaped the fruits of democracy today, millions others remain unemployed. Their only hope is that government actually turns the tide and rebirth a competitive economy as the country recovers from the effects of COVID-19. For Newsroom Africa, Channel 405, I'm Belane Pahadi in Pretoria.